Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell, in which we generally talk about one of Edgar Rice Burroughs books in detail. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like the pulp magazines that Burroughs was published in, old-time radio, classic comic books, old uh, B-movies, and so on. And I keep a blog about such things at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Right now, we are using the mini-podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter analysis of the 1912 novel, A Princess of Mars. Today, we'll be talking about Chapter 5. Now, I should note that we will be including spoilers both for this novel and occasionally for later novels in the series. Also, I would recommend you reread this chapter before continuing on with the podcast because I will be fam- uh, I will be assuming that you are familiar with the events of this chapter as we discuss them. Now, this chapter allows us to get an idea of Sola's character, the kindness she shows that is so antithetical to other green Martians. Burroughs uses her simple act of making sure John Carter is properly warm during the night to highlight this. We also find out more about Willa, though at this point we still don't know his name. He's effectively a Martian watchdog, following John Carter around but not letting him leave the city proper. I enjoyed John Carter's surprise at discovering that Willa can move with extraordinary speed despite his squat squat appearance. Now Burroughs inserts some more world building here hinting that at the origin of the city, as John Carter admires the murals painted on the wall and doubts that the brutal green Martians can be responsible for it. It's made clear here that there is more to Martian civilization than than he's seen seen so far, and Burroughs is very effective in foreshadowing this. Now, his vivid description of a Martian night with the small moons hurtling across the sky emphasizes once again that John Carter is on an alien world, and a few short chapters Burroughs has taken us from Earth and convincingly given us a Mars that we are willing to believe in. And as usual, we see that Burroughs is a master of pacing. The chapter is not just an information dump. John Carter's experiments with escaping Willa and the cliffhanger ending keep the action moving along quite nicely. That's it for now. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics, Old Time Radio, and other cool stuff. You'll also be able to find links to my Amazon.com author page there. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another uh, mini podcast soon. And keep an ear out also for our full-length episode.